Hey guys, today I'm going to present problem 5 from last year's International Math Olympiad. Firstly, let's take a look at the problem statement. We consider triangles of circles with n rows. Such a triangle is called a Japanese triangle if every row has exactly one red circle. A ninja path in such a triangle starts at the top circle and then in each step we either go to the bottom left or bottom right circle until we end in the final row. The question is to find the maximum k in terms of n such that for any Japanese triangle we can always find a ninja path that has at least k red circles. In this video I want to go a bit further in how to find the solution that I'm going to present. If you only want to see the solution then you can just watch the chapters titled lower bound and upper bound. But first let me define r of p to be the number of red circles in a ninja path p. When I saw this setup I thought about just choosing a random ninja path and considering how many red circles would be on that path. The problem is that if we just choose any ninja path with equal probability then it is going to be very unlikely to go along the edge of our Japanese triangle. And therefore, if we just consider the Japanese triangle where all red points or circles are either on the left edge or right edge, then in expectation, we are going to hit very few red circles. I noticed that there was a way to choose a random ninja path in such a way that for any circle in the i-th row, the probability of hitting that circle is precisely 1 over i. Of course, the probability of passing through this top circle is precisely 1 equals 1 over 1. So we need to go to the left and to the right with equal probabilities 1 half. For reaching this circle with probability 1 third, we now need to go left with probability 2 thirds and equivalently go to the right here with probability 2 thirds again. And then the remaining probabilities are 1 third for going in the middle respectively. And we see that in every case, we have exactly a probability in total of one third of reaching any of these circles. We can continue this pattern and I'm going to show you how we can reach all of the circles in row four with probability one over four. Namely, we go to the left with probability three over four here. And then of course, to the right with probability one over four. And here we go left with probability two over four, which is a half. And 2 over 4 to the right and continue in this way. Now let p be the random ninja path. So this is some random variable that we obtain by going with these probabilities along our Japanese triangle. As I said, we now want to compute the expected number e of r of p of red circles on p. We can use a simple trick from probability theory to evaluate this expression. While you don't need a background in probability theory to watch this video, you can tell us if you would be interested in an intro to the topic because we are currently thinking about doing one. Namely, for each row i, we can define the indicator random variable ii to be equal to 1 if and only if p contains the red circle in row i and 0 otherwise. Therefore, r of p is just the sum of all of these random variables, the sum of i going from 1 to n of i i. Here we use the trick I mentioned because by linearity of expectation, this is just the sum of i going from 1 to n of the expectation of i i. The only case where this i i is equal to 1 is if p contains the red circle in row i. By construction of p, the probability for this happening is precisely 1 divided by i, and therefore this sum is equal to the sum of i going from 1 to n of 1 divided by i. The expectation of the number of red circles of this random ninja path p is equal to this sum. This tells us that in particular we can find one fixed ninja path, such that the number of red circles on this path is at least equal to this sum. Therefore, k must be greater than or equal to this expression, which is approximately the natural logarithm of n. Let's now try to find an upper bound for k by a logarithm, 
which means we have to give a construction for a Japanese triangle. Of course, the top circle is red. And by symmetry, we can also color the left circle in the second row red. And at this point, I think it's reasonable to choose the last circle of the third row, because then we don't have a ninja path with three circles that are red in the first three rows. It is not clear how to continue in the fourth row. We want to prove a logarithmic upper bound for k. But notice that here we have a log to the basis of e, which is a little bit weird for our situation here. To be honest, it is natural here that we want something with a log base 2. And this would tell us that we would need to cover like approximately double of the rows we already have without increasing the maximum number of red circles on a ninja path by more than one. Let's see how far we could get now with the same pattern as in rows 2 and 3. So if we color the first circle in row 4 red, then the first circle that could be red in row 5 with our previous restriction would be the third one. And continuing in this way, we can color rows 6 and 7 as well. This confirms that our idea of log base 2 was not a bad idea, because in this construction, we can only ever hit at most one circle that is red from row 1, row 2 to 3, and row 4 to 7. We can repeat this pattern for rows 8 through 15. More generally, this construction shows that if n is equal to 2 to the power of l minus 1, then k is less than or equal to l. Notice that as soon as n reaches the next power of 2, this construction doesn't work any longer. But if n is smaller than 2 to the power of l minus 1, we still get k less than or equal to l nonetheless. And in conclusion, k is less than or equal to the ceiling of log base 2 of n plus 1. This bound looks much more believable than the lower bound we obtained for k earlier. So we want to improve our lower bound of k. I think it's a very natural idea to consider instead of the expectation of r of p, the expectation of 2 to the power of r of p for two reasons. First of all, it gives us the desired base 2 that we are after. Moreover, 2 to the power of x is very convex and grows much faster than linear. And therefore, if we consider the expectation of 2 to the power of r of p, we put a lot of more emphasis on the large values of r of p. So if this is large at one point, this will influence that new expectation much more, and we will therefore get a better bound in the end. However, it is not clear anymore how we can compute this expectation, because we will have a product instead of a sum here, and will not be able to use linearity of expectation. While trying to fix this problem, I noticed that for any probability distribution of ninja paths, there exists a Japanese triangle such that the expectation of 2 to the power of r of p is at most 2 to the power of that sum, which is bad. If you are interested, you can try to prove this fact on your own. This tells us that we have to make our probability distribution of ninja paths dependent on the Japanese triangle we are given. We want to find a random ninja path p such that the expectation of 2 to the power of r of p is greater than or equal to n plus 1. And as I said, the definition of this capital P must depend on the given Japanese triangle. For n equals 1, this is trivially achievable because r of p will be equal to 1 and 2 to the power of 1 equals 1 plus 1. Therefore, by induction, all we really need is for the circle in row i to contribute a 1 to this total expectation. In our previous probability distribution, any ninja path could have been chosen with some small but positive probability. Now, let's make the simplifying assumption that if we look at the red circle in row i, there is one ninja path p that passes through this red circle that we choose with a positive probability. If r is the number of red circles on path p in rows 1 through i minus 1, then ci contributes to our expectation 
2 to the power of the new value of r of p, which is r plus 1, minus 2 to the power of r, times, of course, the probability that we choose p equals p. Since ci should contribute at least 1 to our expectation, as I said before, this tells us that the probability of capital P equals P should be at least 2 to the power of negative R. If we read this constraint in words, then it tells us that at each one of the R circles that are read and appear in P before the circle CI, we are allowed to make 50-50 choices. But everywhere else, at each point where we don't have a red circle, we have to make a deterministic choice. This already tells us how we should define our probability distribution, which is the core of the proof, and therefore we can finish with this motivation. For everybody that skipped the motivation, we are now going to prove that this upper bound is tight. In order to achieve this, we will define for any fixed Japanese triangle a random variable p of ninja paths, such that the expectation of 2 to the power of r of p is greater than or equal to n plus 1. This time we make our random ninja path dependent on the Japanese triangle. And in this way there is a nice way to achieve this bound. Namely, whenever we are at a red circle, we just go left or right with a probability of one half. At every other circle we want to make a deterministic choice such that we can hit all of the circles in the next row. This means that we, if we are on a white circle that is to the left of the red circle in that row, we go to the bottom left. And if we are on a white circle that is to the right of the red circle in that row, we go to the bottom right with probability 1. And since we don't want these two arrows to leave our Japanese triangle, we imagine that there was some n plus first row without red circles, and then we draw all of these arrows, in this case, to the bottom right. Let's denote this imaginary n plus first row by cn plus 1. Any circle except for the top one has exactly one incoming arrow. And therefore, for c, a circle in the n plus first row, we can define or find a unique ninja path p of c, from the top, going through these n plus 1 rows now, ending in C. We want to understand the distribution of the random ninja path P better. And therefore we ask the question, what is the probability that P is equal to P of C for some circle C in the n plus first row? Since we are always deterministic, except for the red circles where we make 50-50 choices, the probability of always following the path p of c is precisely 2 to the power of minus the number of red circles on p of c. So this is 2 to the negative r of p of c. This tells us by definition of expectation that the expectation of 2 to the power of r of capital P is equal to the sum over all possible paths we can choose, or in other words, the sum over c in c n plus 1 of 2 to the power of r of p c times the probability of choosing that path as capital P. Each of those summons is just won by the previous equality, and therefore we indeed get an expectation of n plus 1. Therefore, there must be some c in c n plus 1 such that 2 to the power of r of p of c exceeds this expectation or is greater than or equal to n plus 1. And we know by definition that k is greater than or equal to r of p of c. This is, of course, a ninja path in n plus 1 rows, but in the n plus first row we don't have a red circle, so this is true. And r of p of c is now greater than or equal to log base 2 of n plus 1. Since k is an integer, it must therefore be at least the ceiling of that number. And together with this upper bound, we conclude that k is equal to the ceiling of log base 2 
of n plus 1. And this finishes the solution to that problem.